be kind of a joke when I went to uh, Union Theological Seminary that you could always tell Union students because they had the New York Times in one hand and the Bible in the other. <laughs> I still read the Sunday New York Times and occasionally I get an article that just absolutely stands out. And there's a guy named Tim Wu who is a law professor at Columbia University. He writes these great articles. And one he wrote was uh, uh, about uh, the convenience or inconvenience of modern technology. This was uh, uh, February 18, 2018. And when I get articles, a lot of times I put them aside because I know it's something that interests me, but I don't have the time to really build it. So I had some time. And so I started off thinking about, as I read the article about technology and all this stuff, I'm going to be giving you a world of statistics in a minute. But my first thing is to start out with gaming. And I remember long ago, and you probably know the answer to this, when did World of Warcraft come out? Do you remember? 15 years ago? 15, okay. World of Warcraft was, this, it was a game. And everybody was playing this game. At one point, they had 12 million, 12 million followers worldwide. And I remember I sat down with some students, and they figured, you're going to love this. They thought if everybody gets assigned a role, you have a thing you can take over. So they did this thing, they, and at that time, now I'm told that the, the, the title has changed at that time, they figured that I would have been a shadow priest. And a shadow priest was the type of person who, let's say, some bad person, a group had come in and killed or hurt all of you. My immediate response is to heal all of you as best as I can and then say, who did this? <laughs> <laughs> I am now going to visit them. <laughs> I think that's me. Yep. Yep, on the one hand, I do good and say, somebody will pay for this. <laughs> so then I remember, um, and I don't know if you were one of these that they did this with me too. I tried, they tried to have me sit down with this, and it turns out your age group and all the rest of you here grew up with Xbox and all the rest of that stuff, so you had hand eye coordination. I wasn't on the ground 10 seconds and I got wiped out. <laughs> I had absolutely no hand eye coordination. With that in mind, then I remember a few years ago, I guess it was about 12 years ago, um, oh, South, uh, Park, South Park did a very, very famous thing on World of Warcraft. It is a classic one show where these guys started playing Warcraft and they got involved in this room and they wouldn't leave the room and carpet gets to be the size of a, of a 10 wheel truck. It was just crazy. Anyway. So I thought, I don't know what's going on today, so I started digging some facts, and here you go. Now, this, this worries me because Ian and Krell and, and uh, where Serge knew exactly what I was talking about. I had no idea what this was, and I'm going to ask if any of you know what this was. An M-M-O-R-P-G. You know that. Who else knows? You do. You do. Does anybody else? Ha, ha, ha. Good. Make me feel something like that. <laughs> this stands for, are you ready for this, Massively Multiplayer Online Role-Playing Game. Now, before you laugh at this, there are 181 of these right now. That means it involves 40, 400 million people play these. 400 million. The number one is called League of Legends, and in 2017, this game was viewed 1.5 billion hours on the internet. Whoa. Pay now attention to MMORPGs. All right, then I have some other interesting statistics for you. The population of our planet as of the end of December was 7.6 billion people. Now listen to these statistics. More than one half of the world now uses a smartphone. Think how many billion people that is. More than half the planet uses a smartphone. Almost two-thirds of the world's population now has a mobile phone. Now, do any of you remember the difference between a smartphone and a mobile phone? I remember my first mobile phone was, I was helping a doctor, was the first Motorola flip phone that was about yay big, yay wide, and you had a battery pack that looked like you were fleeing from the world. 
Then I had my first phone, my first cell phone was the Nokia brick. Does anybody remember those? Yes. Yes. <sighs> You have no idea what I'm talking about. No, no, no. All right, Nokia brick. All right. Okay. Then I remember Serge was responsible for this. Serge has me get a um, a um, no. You all souls got me a T-Mobile Dash. That was my first smartphone, and then I went into a BlackBerry. Oh, I love my BlackBerry. Oh, I, I got a BlackBerry. I got two different types of Blackberries. And then, I remember reading the New York Times, I said to Serge, BlackBerry's going under. He says, this is our number one phone, T-Mobile. I said, they did no R&D for six months. They're out, they're gone. I need to get out of this while I can. He said, are you out of your mind? I said, no, you don't do any research and development for six months, you're gone. You're dead, I don't care what you've got for, for surplus, you're gone. In this day and age, that's the kiss of death. So then I got my very first uh, Samsung, and now I, but yeah, smartphones. Okay, some more, some more statistics. More than half of the world's web flow is from mobile phones. Did you know that the average teenager checks their mobile or smartphone 75 times a day? More than half of all mobile connections around the world are now broadband. That's, that's the web. More than one in five of the world's population shopped online in the last 30 days. Yes. All right. The first, by the way, Motorola that was out for everybody to use without being uh, uh, in the intelligence age. It was no, April 3rd, 1991. Okay. The number of apps. Right now, Android leads with the number of apps on your phone, believe it or not. 2.8 million apps. I was dumbfounded. I thought of a couple of hundred. I didn't know there were 2.8 million apps. Apple is a second with 2.2 million apps. Between the two, that's 5 million apps for your phones. I find that I, I, that's beyond something that I can, I can even begin to understand. By the way, by 2015, there were 2 billion PCs. And that was three years ago. So you can imagine how many billion PCs there are now, uh, personal computers. Most addictive apps. Are you ready for this? No. Guess what's number one? Anybody? Facebook. Facebook. Facebook is number one. Number three is Snapchat. Number five, I never heard of. Lose it? Oh, it's a wait app. It's a wait app. How did you? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, number eight is Covet Fashion. Wow. Never heard of that. All right. Number nine is Yahtzee. Yahtzee, Yahtzee with bubbles. You all know that? All right, number 10 is Instagram. Um, number 14 is Boom Beach. What is Boom Beach? <laughs> you know it. Oh, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> number 15, what's app? Yeah, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Okay. What's up? What's up? Uh, yes. Number 31 is Tinder. Number 34 is Groupon. Number 36 is Bumble. And number 37 is Gmail. Okay, where does all this stuff go? I don't know what you do, but I made a list of things that I do with smartphones. How many of you order from Amazon? You don't have to raise your hand. I have found, I have found that I have tried repeatedly to go to stores to give local businesses business first. And I, I, and I don't mean this rudely or, or anything else, but most of the people in the stores don't really know anything about the merchandise. And then if you try to return something, it's like, it's like impossible. So I started buying stuff on Amazon, and I'm embarrassed to say, and I, I fit the bill, I've gotten lazy. It's just easy to click and get it. If, it I, if, you, if you have to return it, you put a label on it, it goes back, and that's it. I'm not happy about that, but I'm telling you, I'm sh this is confession. <laughs> I shot my Number two, the other day, I put this online. People thought this was funny. I accidentally left my smartphone at home. So I was seven hours without a smartphone. <laughs> And I was flabbergasted. It was wonderful. 
It was precious. It was delightful because I got addicted to going to the news hoping now, since I didn't take, I, I have to be careful so I don't say something that's, that's, that's political. I was hoping that a thunderbolt would hit a certain personage or, or something like a meteor would fall out of the sky and flatten a certain personage and I keep waiting for that because accidents happen to people all the time. Natural accidents, am I right? Things open up and swallow people. I keep on waiting. Well, hello! You know, and I keep on waiting and I get... Still waiting. All right. I went seven hours without the phone. Then I turned it on, and I was amazed at how much junk I go through once a week and put unsubscribe and put spam. It's certain that doesn't work because spam begets spam, which begets spam. It's like a whole breeding colony of things to annoy you. Have you ever noticed how many stuff you get on your phone that you wonder, like, how did it get there? I found that I am addicted to looking at the news. And I have no idea why, but I've always been a news junkie, but this makes it easier. So I've got the New York Times, the Washington Post, Politico, Huffington Post, The Guardian, and Axios, which is the big new one that's taken over. And then there's flip news on the uh, flipboard on the computer. That's too much, isn't it? I'm just embarrassing myself here. All right. Then emails. How many of you get emails every day? Oh, yes. How many of you get text messages? Oh, yes, and I allow my students to text me. Yes. I have found, however, that I have been born with something that's not helpful. You see this, 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 this thing here? This evidently is too fat for the average. So I find that when I text, I will text things, and it looks like I'm writing Sanskrit. Because I'll read stuff, and I'll think, what was that? What is that? And you know, people get back and say to me, are you all right? I said, well, what did you look at what you texted? All right. So with all of this, I'm looking at myself, and I'm thinking, you're a mess with this, this, this phone. You've got this, and I think this, is, this has got to be out of control. I've got a Google Pixel 2 XL, which is this Snapdragon processor with an Oreo system. I've got the new Ryzen, this new Ryzen AMD thing with a Lenovo 720-something S laptop, which is faster than... You sneeze, you can start a war. You can sneeze, press a button, and launch a missile from Kazakhstan. I mean, it's... it's about, and then I've got this gamer's desktop. I went in to get... My students told me what I need to do. They said, you need a gamer's processor. You like something fast. So I go into Office Depot. There's a sale on. And I said to this kid, I said, I want this, and I read it to him. He said to me, he looks at me up and down and says, you gain? And I said, no, you. And I can't have a delay. I know you, but I said. And I, I said, he said, he said to me, do, do I look like I gain? He said, that's really fast. I said, I know. I'm addicted to fast. He says, who are you? He said, oh, you're doing my wedding in three months, by the way. <laughs> so I got all this stuff. I don't game, and I'm addicted to speed. And you think I knew what I was doing. I mentioned all these words. And what do I do? I can't text to save my life because the finger's too fat. And I get all these emails, and sometimes I'm like, what have I done? Now, does anybody else get lots of emails, lots of text? Yeah. And you open up your phone and wonder, what have we done? Okay, so things I ran across. Did you know that 30% or more of the Chinese population is classified as addicted to the web? 30%. Um, technology addiction is an umbrella which means that it covers just about everybody today. Because we get hooked on things without realizing. And so um, we look at addictions to the phone, addictions to social media, addictions to Facebook, addictions to Snapchat. We get addicted to texting, addicted to online dating, which I've never done. But I understand 30% of college students today may be higher now, maybe 40%, especially if you're commuter college, online date, because there's nowhere to meet anybody. You go to FIU, and people, well, you go to FIU, and you know the way this works, unless you live on campus, and if you live on campus, it's hard to meet people. You, you commute, you go to a class, you really don't meet anybody in the class, you leave, you go to another class, and then you go home, and then you commute to work, or do you meet people? So you're finding that, is, that, is, that, that adults, half, I, I think about a third of the couples I married today met online. And when I ask my students who do a lot of research papers online dating, 
about 35 to 40 percent of them online dating, which of course brings in the whole area of catfishing. Do you know what catfishing is? <laughs> oh, let me help you. Catfishing, catfishing is when you present yourself as being somebody that you're not. So rather than being a model of the month, you are the slogan. You are not the model of the month. I'm trying to be polite. And that has a whole new thing about how you have yourself and then you develop this alter reality. It's not you. And then when you finally meet somebody, after talking with them online, sometimes it is a shock. All right. We've got texting, online dating, and then there's gambling. Gambling has become a huge online addiction. Now, not only do we have a question of addictions, we've got the other side. If you do all the shopping, and this is what Wu's article is about, if you've got all this stuff for convenience, do you become lazy? At this point, I asked, did you ever see the movie Wall E? Do any of you remember the movie Wall E? All right, for those of you who forgot the movie Wall E, Wall stands for, I love this. You know, people ought to get awards for this. I love this. Waste, Allocation, Land, Lifter, Earth, Class. Waste allocation. Oh, yeah. Land lifter, load lifter, earth. Wall E. Wall E is a robot who is on this planet because the planet is full of trash. And so they put everybody on a ship called Axiom where people get so immobile they wind up just sitting in chairs. These are human beings. They send Eve to Earth to see if there's anything there. And Eve stands for extraterrestrial vegetation. Evaluator. People need to get awards for this. I mean, I could be on something would come up with something like this. She and Wally somehow get together, they go back to Axiom, and they find human beings are basically just kind of in a chair doing nothing. So while we get addictions on one hand to all this technology, the other problem is what if you use all this technology and you wind up losing? Whatever it is that you need to do to be creative. You know, if everything's done for you, with a click of a mouse or a click of a, a, of a button or something, then what, what is left for us to do? Everything's done for us. And part of being a human being is to press the boundaries of doing stuff that's creative. Now, the other thing that, the flip side is, and I don't know if any of you have this problem, what if you get everything done because of all the technology? And then you find that gives you quicker time to do even more. No. Now think about that. What I'm trying to say is how many of you, and I'm curious about this because I asked my students this the other day in preparing for this, how many of you find that you can't relax until you know you've got all the stuff you've got to do is done? Yep. Yep. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because nobody, uh, thank you, then you all understand this. On Friday before Palm Sunday, I got 60 research papers. 60 fat research papers. Then I had a wedding, then I had Palm Sunday. But I couldn't relax because I had the 60 research papers, so I graded them all in three days. Then I had a wedding, then I had Easter, then I had 50 papers from World Religion, which I graded, and now I've got nothing for three weeks. Uh -oh. And I can relax. <laughs> but this is insane. I should have said, look, you don't need to do this all at once, but no. I found that all this technology enabled me to put all these services together, all these sermons together, all this other stuff together, all the orders of worship together, because all this technology went fast, fast, head, zip, 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 in the file went, in the file went, zip, 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 boom, 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 bit, out, went. I'm thinking, you know, to quote an old southern phrase, y'all ain't quite right. <laughs> so this, all this technology either means you get addicted to this stuff, or you run the risk of becoming lazy and losing your edge because everything's done for you. Or all it does is clear it away so you can do more work. So I leave with a quote from Mr. Wu, which I thought is a good way to end this, end this on technology since it's here to stay. Mr. Wu, Dr. Wu writes, we must never forget the joy of doing something slow, ergo the Sanskrit this morning, Dalai Lama, we must never forget the joy of doing something slow and something difficult. The satisfaction of not doing what is easiest. 
That's what makes us human and create. To use an old Unitarian phrase, may it be so. Amen.